Hello, my friends, all over the world. May God bless you today, and may you have a great day. This is Brother Des coming to you today from Prophetic Bible Teachings for Sunday, June the 4th, 2023. Today we continue with the studies in the book of Daniel, chapter 7. Last week we spoke about section 1, division of the four beasts, 7 verse 2, part C. The four great beasts coming out of the sea. Today we continue with the vision of the four beasts and we'll be looking at Daniel chapter 7 and verse 4. And this is part D. The first beast, the Gentile nation of Babylon. And our topic today is the lion with the head of gold. The prophetic scriptures state the first was like a lion. He had eagle's wings. I beheld till the wings thereof were plucked or broken off, and it was lifted up from the earth and made to stand upon his feet, upon the feet as a man, and a man's heart was given to it. In studying this first beast, we will consider one, the characteristics of the beast, and two, the prophetic messages of the first beast. As we look at the characteristics of this first beast, he looked like a lion. He wasn't really a lion, but he looked like a lion. That's a simile. He had eagle's wings. His wings were plucked or pulled from him. He was made to stand up on his feet as a man. A man's heart was given to him. This is the first beast. So this brings us now, having look at the characteristics, let's look at the prophetic messages from the characteristics given. One, he looked like a lion. Similarities representing the kingdom of Babylon as presented in Daniel chapter 2 as the head of gold who was representing the Babylonian empire. That's why we said the lion with the head of gold. The second thing we see about him, he had eagle's wings. Oh, by the way, we want you to know that the lion was always the symbol of the kingdom of Babylon. And here it is, God was predicting what will happen. The second thing, the, the eagle or this lion had eagle's wings. <clears throat> Similarity representing the kingdom of the Babylonian Empire. As we mentioned, the symbol was a lion, and in some, some photos and so on, you see the symbol with wings on the lion. Isn't that interesting? History shows that Nebuchadnezzar had the ability to move his army quickly as they were flying with wings. That's something to think about. Also, the fact that it looked like a lion was showing the ferocity of Nebuchadnezzar's army and his leadership. Also, leaders such as Alexander the Great, Roman Caesars, Napoleon, all incorporated this technique. Even in World War II, one and two, used aircraft flying in similar battle techniques. Can you imagine? And here Daniel saw this lion of battle with wings like an eagle showing all about Nebuchadnezzar and Babylon at this time. And yet we find that this prophecy is repeated. 
Whenever God repeats something, the law of double reference, God is serious. Well, he's never not serious. He's always serious in everything that he says. Another thing about the wings of this, on this animal. His wings were plucked or pulled off from him. The actions represents God's judgment on Nebuchadnezzar. You remember? When he took away his power and, and he threw him outside there, how he was humiliated and ate grass like an animal until he realized that the Most High gives power to whom he wills. The fourth thing about the description here and the prophecy, this lion with the eagle's wings was made to stand up on his feet as a man and not a beast. This represents the fact that when Nebuchadnezzar humbled himself before God and realized it is God who's in charge, not him, and he confessed his faults and sins, he was able to regain sanity, stand upon his feet rather than on his knees and hands like an animal crawling for seven years. And the fifth thing we see in this prophecy, a man's heart was given to the first beast. As we have taught in the past uh, pa uh, former teachings, Nebuchadnezzar gave his testimony, which he showed that he repented and he committed himself to God. This represents God giving him a man's heart or a new heart. And number six, while the head of gold on the image represents the outward glory of this advanced civilization, the cruel nature of the lion describes the brutal paganism of this kingdom, which is clearly illustrated in chapter two and three of the book of Daniel. And the seventh thing we see here, the kingdom was captured by the Medes and Persians under which Darius and Cyrus became the king rulers. As we taught about the history and we will see in the second beast that's coming, we will see what happened with the Medes and the Persians. You remember? Belshazzar made a big feast, had all his concubines, and he called in for the vessels of the temple. They desecrated the vessels that were used to worship God. God wrote on the walls of the palace where the big function was going on, tickle, tickle, or many, many, Tickle, you fasten. Wade, wade. Fine wanting. He was judged that night. Wade in the balances of God. And the Medes and the Persians took over, as we'll see in the next one. The lessons for us today. The above teaching of this prophecy is about Babylon, which is represented by the lion, which shows strength. Babylon was a beautiful and powerful kingdom. It is told that her lion is still seen and, you know, mounted on a pestle, oh, in rubbles. The hanging gardens they put up, the brick walls around the city, like a corkscrew ran a runway that went to the top. There at the top of the wall were altars on which human sacrifices were offered. They had a postal system. They had a literate people who had a great library. 
they had bathtubs with brass plumbing. Around the city was 300 foot high wall, enough that four chariots could ride abreast upon it, and which wall protected the entire city. And a water flowing all around the city. When you add it all up, Babylon endured because God Almighty had this nation in his plan. He allowed her to prosper. Nevertheless, Babylon was conquered under the leadership while King Belshazzar was the king. Many, many, tickle you faster. God told him, you're weighed, you're weighed, you're numbered, and you're found wanting. This judgment on Babylon meant that the head of gold in chapter 2 and the lion here in chapter 7 closes out the kingdom and this particular prophecy of Babylon. In the book of Revelation, there are other prophecies about Babylon, but it has more to do with the blasphemies and, and, and the religious aspects of which was passed down from Babylon. And that religious factor that has polluted and continue to pollute people today. Lesson number one, as stated in the beginning of the book, God is the one who gives power to nations people and individuals. He lifts up rulers and leaders and he's the one who takes them down. Like Babylon, with all its pomp and beauty, we too may have been blessed by God and it does not matter how power or how much power we may have. Our end will also come. My mother used to say, Every rope has an end. Therefore, it behooves us to not allow the blessings he has blessed us with to take our eyes off of God, as did Nebuchadnezzar and was punished by God. Belshazzar did not learn the lesson, for he lost not only the kingdom, but his life. Number three, from the above example, as believers of Jesus Christ, let us continue to trust in him, remain humble before him, and enjoy the blessings of serving him in the time he has allotted to each of us. Number four, if you have never placed your full trust in God and have come to know him through Jesus Christ, his son, take Christ today as Nebuchadnezzar did in God made him to stand. You say, wait a minute, Nebuchadnezzar didn't know anything about the Son of God, Jesus Christ. Hey, you remember Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego when they were in the fire? What Nebuchadnezzar said? I see four men, and one looks like the Son of God. Call on him today. That's the one that Nebuchadnezzar saw. He could make you Stand up on your feet as a man or woman that he has in his plans for you. So ask Jesus Christ to come into your life right now. Amen? Amen. You do it. Well, in case if anyone missed the teachings of the book of Revelation and also those of Daniel so far, you may retrieve them on YouTube under my name. You can look up Dr. Desmond. M. Coverley. Also, you can follow this ministry on YouTube, Facebook, my story, Instagram, Twitter, WhatsApp, LinkedIn, Pinterest. Also, check out the website, www.corbanjay.com. Keep studying, and may God bless you. And if you trust Christ as your Savior, go to a place where you can grow in the Word of God. Amen. Amen. Have a great day.